Hey guys, my name is Neil Chetta. I'm a physics tutor with Far From Standard Tutoring. And today we're going to look at the relationship between uh, linear kinematics and rotational kinematics. The first thing we need to do is just analyze our units. So, our linear displacement is measured in meters. While our rotational displacement with the variable theta is measured in radians. Okay, now this is the baseline unit and we're going to go ahead and extrapolate that to velocity and acceleration. So velocity is going to be measured in meters per second, while rotational velocity omega is measured in radians per second. And finally we have acceleration. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared, while rotational acceleration alpha is measured in radians per second squared. So what is the relationship between a radian and a meter? Well, this can best be illustrated by taking a look at a, uh, a circle or a tire. So let's go ahead and have a tire that's painted red, okay, so, and it has some radius r. And we are going to ask this tire to make one complete revolution on the ground and see how far it travels in the x or linear direction. So, we know that the amount of linear distance along the outside of the circle is equal, the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. And every circle has 2 pi radians in it, which tells us that the linear distance is equal to 2 pi times the radius. So the radius is what links our rotational world and our linear world. So now let's take a look at the variables and set that same relationship up. Linear distance d is equal to angular displacement times r. Pretty simple. Linear velocity is equal to angular velocity times r. And our linear acceleration is equal to angular acceleration times r. So again, the radius is what's going to link up our linear and rotational world. So make sure you know that before you start any question. All right, so now that we've seen the relationship between the variables, let's take a look at how we put the variables into equations. Now from the previous video, you've seen the linear kinematics equations. Distance is equal to 1 half velocity initial plus velocity final times time. This was that average velocity times time equals displacement. In the rotational world, this equation can be written as theta is equal to 1 half times omega initial plus omega final times time. All I did was replace the variables with my rotational variables. Second equation, displacement is equal to v initial times time plus or minus 1 half at squared. Rotationally, that becomes theta is equal to omega initial times time plus or minus one half alpha t squared. And uh, two more equations. The third one is v final squared equals the initial velocity squared plus or minus two ad. And the rotational equation will be omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus or minus 2 alpha times theta. And finally, the last equation is v final equals v initial plus or minus at. And rotationally, that becomes omega final equals omega initial plus or minus alpha times time. Now, just like we had the missing variable technique with linear kinematics, we can use the same exact technique for rotational kinematics. So in this first equation, the missing variable is alpha. For the second equation, the missing variable is omega final. Uh, for the third equation, the missing variable is going to be time. And for the very last equation, the missing variable is going to be theta. So review your missing variable technique and you can apply it to rotational kinematics in the same way. 
basically killing two birds with one stone. All right, good luck.